So I was going through my stuff on Yinlin and I decided to confirm my understanding of her signature weapon String Master to make sure I don't spread misinformation based on wrong assumptions. Because the power spike looked kind of ridiculous. And I noticed that the tooltip in the English version is actually not correct. If we take a closer look, it's supposed to give us 12% attack upon dealing resonance skill damage, stacking up to two times. Now this part is correct, but the next line reads, if the equipped resonator is not on the field, increases their attack by an additional 12%. But it turns out this weapon adds another 24% instead, or a total of 48% attack. So it provides more attack than stated on the tooltip. So I had a look at the CN wording and it made a lot more sense there. Basically, this off-field 12% attack applies to every stack individually. And that's also in line with what the character sheet reports in-game. There's also another bug with Yinlin's kit, by the way, where her second inherent passive simply doesn't work at all. I've tested it multiple times, but neither does it give more damage on the second part of her skill, nor does it give her the attack buff that it's supposed to give you. And I made triple sure that I have the passive activated. But yeah, compensation incoming, we will see. Now why does this warrant a video? It's just a tooltip error, right? Well, one reason is that this weapon is even more broken than initially assumed if you were still on the fence about the weapon specifically. The other is that this ties into a debate on how to best play Yinlin. And I've been quite reluctant to put out a guide so far because I wasn't sure how to address this divide between quick swap Yinlin, where you swap on and off all the time to skip every animation that's not absolutely required, and a more standard approach where you take the field, do your thing without interruption, and then swap off and enjoy your lightning strikes in the background. Now personally I prefer the latter playstyle because skill issues, and the devs seem to think so too. Maybe it's because they lack the foresight to predict what plays would figure out as possible with swap cancels and so on. But they designed this weapon with a goal in mind to sell it to us. And if EN had the correct tooltip, it would basically tell you that if you have Yinlin on the field for any longer than she absolutely has to, to set up her marks and get off her burst, she loses half of the weapon's attack bonus that's then applied to her background lightning. Because keep in mind the lightning strikes are skill damage as well. So they will keep refreshing both parts of this weapon passive for maximum uptime unless you call her back onto the field. The damage of her judgment strikes is calculated in real time, so if your attack value goes down, even temporarily, your next judgment strike will deal lower damage based on that new attack value. I also think that a lot of the desire to play quick swap comes from the fact that Yilin's best current partner Kalcharo can be an absolute pain in the butt to play with long animations that leave you vulnerable and will get you killed in the tower, especially against waves of enemies. So the idea was to do something else on Yinlin while Kalcharo is stuck in his animations, both for better DPS and for better survivability. But Kuro nerfed that too by entirely removing ultra buffs upon character swap. Not sure why, maybe they're thinking too much quick swapping will break the game long term, maybe they think if swap cancelling everything becomes meta it will turn off the average player, who knows. Now, like I said personally, I do prefer this more streamlined approach to combat. It doesn't take any of the fun away for me. In fact, it causes me less stress because I can focus more on the fight and less on my keyboard. But I'm not sure if I agree with Kuro actively punishing the quick swap playstyle. If you have any opinion on how to best play Yinlin and what you found to be the most fun with her, do let me know in the comments. Would love to get some discussions going. And let me know if you'd be interested in a full Yinlin guide based on a more streamlined approach to her rotation and playstyle. Anyway, just wanted to get this PSI out. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.